Okay, so my talk is I improve my math fluency, and so can you. Um, this is a picture of me in high school. <laughs> Not really. Um, I don't think there is a stock quality, stock art quality photo of me in high school, but if there was, this is what it would look like. Um, for most of my adolescence, I hated math. The reason I hated math was because I wasn't good at it. It didn't come naturally to me. Writing and reading did, but anytime I stepped into math class, I felt like I was in a foreign country. I didn't understand the language. I would look at a math problem or an equation, and this is what I would look like. I could pick out a few words and phrases, but the general idea was lost to me, which is what this slide says in German. I hope I use Google Translate. <laughs> I could not say that at all. But, um, I was able to pick out certain words and phrases and understand some concepts, but I could not get big picture. And uh, so for most of my life, I avoided math. I'm really embarrassed to admit that it was one of the reasons why I became a journalist, um, was because I wanted a career where I would never have to do math again. Um, but for the first 20 years of my life, I just had this erroneous thought that if you're bad at math, it's something that couldn't be changed, like your hair color, which could be changed, but um, your eye color, your height, um, it was just a part of you and that forever I would be bad at math. But as I became a journalist, I found a lot of really great stories in data sets and I realized that it could just not be my lot in life to be terrible at math. And that's when I started to think of math as being like a foreign language. Um, I certainly can't speak German, but if I wanted to try, I could spend a lot of time reading books and becoming immersed in the language. And while I wouldn't be totally fluent, I would certainly know enough German to get along if I ever visited Dusseldorf one day. And so I decided that I could also do the same with mathematical literacy, which is also called numeracy. And I decided to just read a bunch of books and see if I could improve my math skills that way. And I did, and here's what I learned. Um, my number one tip is that if books are your thing, then read books. I read fast, I love reading. Language comes naturally, math does not. Um, so what I did was I basically scoured the internet for books about math, and I read them during my spare time. Um, my brain is more comfortable thinking in words than numbers, so I decided to use that to my advantage and read a bunch of books. That really helped me understand a lot of high-level and low-level um, math concepts that I didn't understand before. You might be asking, what books did I read? Well, all the ideas from this talk I stole from these books, so at the end, I will be a good journalist and cite my sources, and um, it doubles as a reading list. Uh, my second tip is to get out a pencil and paper, definitely a pencil because you'll need an eraser, but uh, I learned that I could read as much as I wanted about mathematical concepts to understand them, and I could press a button or run some code in R that would you know, give me a chi-square value, but I would never understand what it was actually doing unless I sat down and figured it out myself. This was probably the advice that was most helpful to me, um, just sitting down quietly and taking a pencil and paper and figuring something out. It's not something you can do on deadline. This is something that you do in your spare time or when you have time by yourself to help you really understand um, core concepts. Because then when you are on deadline and you have to press that button or you have to run that R code, not only are you understanding what's happening, you're confident in your results and your understanding of it. Um, my third tip is to use recall, which um, is just uh, doing things over and over and then covering them up and trying to remember them uh, by memory. It strengthens your mind muscle. Um, so after you've gotten out your pencil and paper and you've figured out that equation, hide your work, hide whatever book you were using to help you figure through it and try to do it by yourself. It will be difficult and you will screw it up multiple times, but that's okay. You have to think of recall as doing reps for your mind. You don't get a ticket to Soul City if you only go to the gym once. And that is my life motto. And I don't know where the slides went. Uh, okay, cool. So number four is to take a hike. Um, and it doesn't have to be a hike. It could be a walk, um, a bike ride. Um, you can go knit or something. But if you're going through an equation and you're doing step number two, like I told you about, and trying to figure it out on your own using a pencil and paper, um, I would always get very, very stuck. And I would just... Um, keep hacking away at it and get frustrated. If you take a break, take a walk, go get a coffee, come back to it, start over, repeat as necessary, I promise you will get it. Uh, number five is to chunk your learning. Chunking is a really simple strategy where instead of um, trying to learn a big, huge concept all at once, you break it up into smaller pieces of info. 
Here's an example of chunking. I'm going to read you this number. That's 573867-5309. That's long. It's difficult to remember, and it doesn't really mean anything to you, except when I chunk it in the way you're used to, 573-867-5309. That would be Jenny's phone number if she lived in mid-Missouri. And chunking is an easy way to um, uh, boost your um, numeric memory. So um, those are the five tips that helped me the most. There are tons more. Here are my sources and my reading list. I've only mentioned the ones that help fast, but I highly recommend um, reading all these books, and I'll tweet them out later um, if you want to read them then. Thanks.